Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on antibiotics and antibiotic resistance. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the tetracycline antibiotics. Okay, so we're going to start off with uh, a discussion of how, um, how mRNA is translated in um, bacteria because it is on the process of translation which the tetracycline antibiotics work, basically. Uh, so we're going to look at the process of translation in a bit of detail. We're then going to see exactly where tetracycline antibiotics um, act, and then we're going to have a look at some examples of tetracycline antibiotics. Okay, so let's begin with the process of translation then. So translation in bacteria. And translation is undertaken by the ribosomes in um, bacteria. And very luckily, uh, bacterial ribosomes have a slightly different structure to um, eukaryotic ribosomes. So we can get antibiotics that specifically target uh, prokaryotic or bacterial uh, ribosomes and don't interfere with eukaryotic ribosomes because it would be an utter disaster to give someone a drug which uh, is going to destroy, well, it's going to interfere with um, translation in their own cells. Okay, so uh, these antibiotics and, and all antibiotics which affect um, which affect um, translation uh, and are clinically used um, are incredibly selective for bacterial translation over eukaryotic translation. Okay, so let's begin with the process of translation then. So let's say we have a piece of mRNA here. So this is the mRNA that we want to translate into protein. So we have transcribed our gene into a piece of mRNA, so let's say that's it, this is our piece of mRNA, and we now want to um, translate this mRNA into a protein. Well, basically the first step in translation is that you assemble uh, a 30S mRNA complex, basically. Okay, so uh, we'll begin with that first. Wait a second. Um, um, Okay, let's begin then. Right, so um, you get your uh, 30S complex here. So the, the ribosome in bacteria is um, made up of two pieces, a 30S subunit and a 50S subunit. And initially what's going to happen is that you are going to bind this mRNA to the 30S subunit of the ribosome, basically. Okay, uh, so uh, what you have to do before you, before even you begin by uh, binding the mRNA to the 30S subunit, initially what you have to do is add on a, a certain number of initiation factors onto your 30S ribosome, uh, ribosomal subunit. So you add on the initiation factors 1, initiation factor 2, initiation factor 3, and GTP. Okay, so this gets the ribosome or subunit, the 30S ribosome or subunit, ready uh, to begin the translation process. So uh, these factors here, this initiation factor 1, 2, and 3, they first have to bind to our 30S subunit, and you also have to have this molecule of GTP, which I'll colour in green. Okay, so first, before you can even bind the mRNA to the 30S ribosomal subunit, you need the, uh, the 30S ribosomal subunit to associate with these initiation factors. So this is specifically the one I'm pointing at is initiation factor 3. Okay, and they're often denoted IF for initiation factor, so this would be IF3. Okay, right. So now what happens is that the uh, 30S ribosomal subunit is going to bind with the mRNA first. Okay, so the mRNA basically has a region which binds uh, to the uh, 30S ribosomal subunit, and this region is known as the shine dalgano sequence. So the shine dalgano sequence, named after, I, I believe, scientist. shine dalgano sequence. Okay, so this is a uh, conserved sequence that usually somewhere has within it 
uh, this code, A-G-G-A, -A, AGA. Um, so AGA is usually found somewhere in the Shine Delgano sequence. And I want to stress that the Shine Delgano sequence is not just one sequence. There are many different sequences which combine to this um, 30S ribosomal subunit, but they usually all have this A-G-G-A -A in them somewhere. Okay, right. So, first step then is to bind this mRNA's Shine Dalgano sequence, I'm sorry, Shine Dalgano sequence to the 30S ribosomal subunit. Okay, so let's draw that happening. So, what's going to happen is we're going to bind our Shine Dalgano sequence to our uh, 30S ribosomal subunit. So, here is our piece of mRNA here. And now it's bound to our 30S ribosomal subunit. And all the initiation factors are still bound on as well. So initiation factor 1, initiation factor 2, initiation factor 3, and here is GTP. Right, okay. The next step that you need to happen is... Um, so actually, let me just colour in the shine Dalgano sequence. Let's say this is the shine Dalgano sequence here. What colour should I use? Orange, I think. So the shine Dalgano sequence is in orange here. Okay, right. Just uh, downstream of the shine Dalgano sequence, usually around 5 to 10 um, organic bases down from the shine Dalgano sequence, is another sequence. And this is the start codon, basically. So there is the start codon just downstream of the shine Dalgado, Dalgano sequence. And this is always the same. This is always conserved. This is the organic base sequence A for adenine, U for uracil, because remember, in uh, mRNA, you don't use the organic base thymine. Instead, you use uracil, and then G for guanine. Okay, so basically, somewhere just downstream here, you have this start codon. So this is where you're going to actually start translations. You're going to bring in a tRNA behind it to there, and then you'll continue on from there, basically. You won't transcribe the bit upstream of the uh, start codon. Sorry, you won't translate the bit upstream of the start codon. Right, so what's going to come along next is the first uh, tRNA, which has a anticodon, which is complementary to AUG. So what's going to come along is our first tRNA, which I will draw like so. So this is the um, anticodon portion here. So this is going, this sort of horizontal line here is going to denote the anticodon of our tRNA. And then I'm going to draw a blob at the end to denote the amino acid, which is uh, charged on the tRNA. Well, mounted on the tRNA, but you call this a charged tRNA molecule. So this is the tRNA here with an amino acid on the end. Uh, and when, an, a, when a tRNA molecule has an amino acid docked on its end, then it's known as a charged uh, tRNA molecule. Now, um, the first tRNA molecule, so let's have a look at this first tRNA molecule. So let's blow it up a bit and look at this first tRNA molecule that's going to come in. Well, it needs to have a complementary anticodon to AUG. So, what's the complementary organic base to A? What well, would be thymine in DNA, but this is RNA, so it's uracil. What's the complementary organic base to uracil? Well, that's A, adenine. Uh, the complementary organic base to guanine is then cytosine. So you're going to have UAC, basically. So uh, the first tRNA which comes in here will have the complementary anticodon to this start codon, and it always, absolutely always, has a, uh, a fixed amino acid on uh, its end here. So the amino acid that's docked on it will be a fixed amino acid, and that fixed amino acid is 4-mile methionine. Uh, so, um, basically, um, the uh, methionine amino acid has a 4-mile group on, and that 4-mile group covers the amino terminus of uh, that amino acid, basically. So, if I um, just draw the structure of methionine for you, uh, but we'll do that in the next video. So, I'll cut this one here, and we'll do that in the next video.